presented by Fiberglass. Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar channel. This week, we're gonna finish up our carbon fiber dash. For some of you who are new, let me catch up to speed. We are working on this Nissan 300ZX and we are converting it to electric. It's gonna have a Tesla motor and it's gonna produce about 600 horsepower. So on the inside, because we're switching it to electric, a lot of the dash things are not gonna be applicable anymore. So things like the tachometer, gas gauge, oil pressure, oil temperature, that's all not gonna be applicable. So we partnered with AEM and we've got a digital dash and it's going to give us all the display things we need. And in case you missed it, we did a collaboration with Builder Creator. I'll leave a link to his video right up here. And he helped us make the carbon fiber front plate. So we're going to be completing the rest of the assembly for the dash and the surround. Let's get to it. Today's sponsor is Viofo. We got a 4K A229 Pro. Look at that. This is really nice. It's got three channels, so it can mount one in the car, one on the rear view, one out the front. This is an anti-glare lens. This will be for your rear cam. This is a power cable. So I think we've got everything we need. Let's go install it. All right, we have the car of choice. We're gonna install the dash cam. So I'm gonna start the timer. We'll see if we can do it within 20 minutes. So we are going. So the A229 is the first camera with the newest Sony Starvis 2 sensor. The IMX678 and the IMX675 image sensors. So these two sensors offer a wider dynamic range with more light sensitivity, bringing much less noise and motion blur in day and night recording. When considering a dash cam, let's face it, image quality is one of the most important features. So the A229 Pro offers a full HDR 4K front camera, as well as a 2K rear camera and a 1080p interior camera. So the interior camera has infrared LED lights that help light up even in very low light conditions, kind of like night vision. It also has 24 seven parking monitoring. So it has a built-in kind of shock sensor, G sensor that detects if your car is being bumped. It also has a 2.4 ultra HD screen. And we stopped at 2640. This one actually comes with a special Bluetooth button. When you push it, it automatically saves the video. So again, sometimes if you're driving or whatever, quite sure what button to push up on your dash, cause you know, there's a couple different buttons and things. So this one you can locate pretty much anywhere. Nice big button, push it to record your video. Push it, automatically detect and write a video for you. So right now they also have their summer sale going on where you can get up to $75 off from July 23rd to 31st. So if you're interested in a dash cam, I will leave a link in the video description below. Here's the original gauge cluster for the Nissan. It's got a few mounting holes up there, some over here. And basically because we've removed the engine, the RPMs aren't gonna be good miles per hour, likely also not gonna be good. Oil, temperature, fuel, everything's kind of just not gonna be helpful. So we're gonna switch for a digital dash and I've designed something to kind of go in this place to go with the digital dash that we bought. This is a 3D printed part and I've designed it to kind of fit just with this one. We've got the same mounting holes and everything, but I wanna go a little bit on the uh, very nice side. Instead of having this just be 3D printed, we're gonna go for some carbon fiber. This one is addressed to the EV doctor from Builder Creator. So this is the gauge surround or instrument cluster surround. I did a collaboration with Builder Creator. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link right up here and click on it and watch how he makes this. All right, we also got some goodies. This is a shark to teach you to be aggressive on the track. We also have some titanium parts because every supercar needs some. Got some Builder Creator swag. Definitely need to support that. That looks great. So it looks like we got some sandpaper as well as these are kind of some threaded inserts you can use. And we got this one. Ah, another excellent choice. You're so smart to choose Builder Creator. Awesome. Again, for reference, this is the part the Builder Creator made, and it's going to be about the only part you can see. What we're going to make is this, essentially kind of the body that has parts for a car to hold on to. This will go and be mated with the part that we're making, but I'm going to make this. All right, this printer's about on its way out. Printed one last thing here. This is the dash. This is going to allow us to create, I'll call it the whole shell. I mean, we can either choose to do that out of carbon fiber or just fiberglass. All right, here's the part. We're going to have ridges and things and that's going to be okay because like I said we're going to make the part look good after. My only goal with this is to have the resin and stuff not stick super hard to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this with a lot of wax and some mold release. All right, I usually don't use PVA because I haven't found a good way to make it not mess up kind of the surface finish, but because I'm not starting with a good surface finish we're going to go ahead and use it. So that way we'll have the mold release, the wax, and PVA. 
All right, one other thing. This is the scale I've been using for years. And as you can see, it's got some residue on it. So we've actually gone and got another one. This is one of the things you can pick up from fiberglass. Fiberglass has been one of my longest supporters. They have everything from fiberglass to resins, carbon fiber, everything in between, gloves, application brushes. So if you've got any projects like this, go visit fiberglass.com. One of the other things I get from fiberglass is their gloves. So again, they've got everything you need to make this whole process. And these are like really nice ones. Kind of smooth, they got like the powder on the inside. So when your hands sweat, you're not dripping. So I'm gonna go for not white, but kind of like a dark gray. It's got some pigment there. And then the catalyst. It's kind of coming out more of a gray. So here is the part with all the fiberglass on. So it looks pretty good. So now we're gonna take it apart and because we didn't do any prep, I'm perfectly okay just demolishing this mold. So if we wanna make it again, all we have to do is print, just a couple bucks. All right, we did do mold release wax as well as PVA. So the goal is to not have the 3D printed material stick to the fiberglass. Other than that though, we're gonna destroy it because I know it's got ridges and other things that are gonna make it not wanna pop out. So we'll just get to destroying. All right, here is where we are. This is the OEM part, and then we've got the carbon fiber part, and essentially the, it's the fiberglass part there. So again, I think we've got pretty good seams all the way around. The only thing, there's just a little gap, daylight here. Again, it'll be dark, so you can't see, but I still think I wanna maybe do something right there. It's kind of on both sides. So I'll probably create, I don't know if it's fiberglass or something, I'll create it there. And then this whole piece, I'll just paint black. I don't think you'll be able to see any of it, but uh, just in case you do, it won't to be in sharp contrast with the carbon fiber. All right, I've just got some thin plastic that I've kind of formed around the display, kind of on both sides. So I'm just gonna seal up the very corner so I don't have like any resin dripping through. But I'm just gonna put a, some fiberglass walls kind of up there to kind of block out, I don't wanna call it light, but essentially the through holes. All right, I think this is set up just enough that I can take off the plastic here. Yeah, perfect.
All right, it's gonna be really hard for me not to make this pretty, but this is literally the backside and it can never be seen unless the console is actually taken out. So we're not gonna do very much touch up work. We're just gonna clean it up. We are gonna put a layer of paint. I'm thinking to do some truck bed liner, some black kind of tough material. And uh, I think that'll work well. I used the outdoor paint booth this time. And again, I think this turned out okay. Remember, everything here is gonna be pretty much hidden. There might be a few places where you can kind of sneak through or peek through, but uh, we're just looking for black underneath. All right, there we are, just like that. It's looking pretty good. Again, all this will be covered up, but I wanted to have something that looked decent, not just kind of some raw fiberglass. So that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and mount the front carbon fiber piece. All right, we're gonna go with some laminating epoxy. I've actually had some good success with this on fiberglass as well as carbon fiber and gel coats and everything in between. So this is just a good general purpose epoxy and I'm gonna be using it to laminate to the fiberglass piece that I made. You think we got enough clamps? This says it's 10 minute epoxy. We'll probably leave it for a good half hour and see how it does. We're gonna take off all these clamps and see what it looks like. There we go. I think it looks pretty good. All right, well, this is looking really good. Very pleased with how everything's turning out. And again, this piece here that I made is just kind of, I'll call it background. So you don't really see it from anywhere unless you take the car apart. So one last thing I'll do is I'll wire this up just so we can get the screen to turn on and then I think we'll call this good. So on the back here, this is for the GPS. This is kind of a communication cable. That'll be the program, things like that. So this has got power as well as can and then all the potential buttons that this offers. So we'll go ahead and just power it up. We probably won't do any programming yet, but just to let you see what it looks like. We will have to configure our own screen for our own parameters, but this is what it starts out with. So again, I think that'll look really nice. And if we need to like add any other indicators, we can kind of just populate those here and here. But again, I think most everything should be able to be contained on the screen. So again, I think that looks really nice overall. I'm really pleased with how everything turned out. So we will likely do an entire different episode when everything's up and running. Right now we could configure this, but none of the things like vehicle speed, state of charge, things like that would really be active. So I don't think it makes a lot of sense to do that right now. So we'll do that once some of the other systems are active. So I have worked with the AM dash before. I did one for Jerry Rig Everything on his electric Humvee. Granted, his had a couple different components. These are all gonna be AEM, so hopefully it'll be a lot easier. All right, this is pretty exciting. This is one of the most visual parts for the driver. So glad that we could get this looking so good. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Speed, we are... <coughs> Sorry. So we're, excuse me. So 